Was this the year of headbanging or what? Save me. Oh, that was nice. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jennifer Glatzofer, but you could call me Jen. I am a musical theatre performer and a voice teacher. And today I am looking at a new group for myself. And this one has again been requested by none other than Ian. <laughs> There's a sort of theme coming from um, Ian's suggestions so far, which tend to be quite like heavy. <laughs> well, actually not really, but he does like an array of different types of music. <laughs> so we'll see where we go. As you can see from the title, this will be Alice in Chains. And I have decided to put these two together upon suggestion of Ian. <laughs> so I will be looking at two live performances, the first one being Rooster and then the second one being Man in the Box. I'm so excited to be hearing new vocals and breaking them down with you. As always, this will be a reaction and an analysis video, so I will be stopping and talking about the vocals. Feel free to click off of this video if you feel like I'm talking too much, but I'm just saying right now what will be happening. <laughs> if you do enjoy what I do over here, then please do consider checking me out over on Patreon. There are lots of fun things happening over there. But otherwise, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell button and let's get straight to it because we've got a lot to cover. Let's go. Okay, we're going to be starting off with Rooster. This is a live performance from MTV Unplugged. Um, I am the things that I know beforehand going in. I'm told that the guitarist wrote this um, and for his father whose nickname was The Rooster. Okay, wow. Um, so already quite a chilling setting and vibe. Um, I'm liking the difference between our, so I'm not that familiar with Alice in Chains, believe it or not, but I, uh, I'm so happy that, you know, performances like this are so available for us to watch because now I get to listen to them and see if I like it and see if I go further. Anyway, I, uh, what's really interesting is from our lead vocalist Lane here, he's quite far away from the mic. I mean, they're both sat down, uh, the guitarist like BV lines as well, but he's quite far away from the mic, whereas our harmony line it's sat right close to the mic. <laughs> One producing a very like a higher line, a much more breathier, both on ooh vowels, but much more breathier falsetto sound. Whereas the BV line, a little bit more connected to his chest voice. So maybe that's why he's a bit more, you know, because we tend to like our ears hone in more to higher frequency. So maybe the further away, the higher note is, the more blended those two sounds will be together. Um, but I'm liking like the phrasing of both of that, the both of them working together. There was a little breath moment that wasn't together, but that just kind of goes with this haunting sort of feeling uh, that we're, you know, introduced to. That. I love an mm in a phrase. Uh, interesting here though, it happened at the end of the phrase, but the direction of his voice 
in those just those first few phrases that we heard with the lyrics very very forward place it's everything's very very forward he doesn't need to open his mouth too much because he's keeping everything right forward near the teeth area and even these mm, right forward uh very resonant sound forward resonance mm really nice and I like uh everything's more on an open vowel as well every turn into every so it just even though he's keeping small he is choosing to sing on open vowels Seems every me to Rrr, but then quite close there with the tongue Yeah, there's such like a lazy sort of feel in, the, in his approach to the um, words and how he's singing it, which is really, really lovely. That it just seems so tense free. He sat down as well. And uh, screams, is it on screams? No. Mm. On that F. So the beginning part of his first passage there. And he is bringing up a thicker sound. And in order to do that, he's kind of opening the screams, which is an E vowel, to a bit more of an E vowel. So instead of screams and maybe feeling a bit squeezed, to ensure that his larynx isn't going to come up with him as he may, as he's maintaining this kind of relaxed feel. Screams is keeping it kind of like an E vowel. And there's a slight rasp coming in now as well, which is really lovely because we had this clear kind of sound. And now he's kind of and to, like allowing some distortion to come through. The bullet screamed to me from somewhere. Mm. Here they come to snuff the rooster. Oh, that was nice. So again, on that F, opening up a bit more to an air vowel here. Yeah, and he's still maintaining this thick, thick sound. I love the addition of the backing vocal, uh, you know, the duo line here on the vocal line. What's interesting as well is that Lane is keeping this er uh sound on Rooster, like we heard on Somewhere before. He's kind of closing in, whereas Jerry tends to open it up, keep it on that uh, vowel rather than close on the er. Uh. So there is a little bit of difference there, but like sometimes we want to hear a line where the BV line is matching the phrasing, the breath, the vowel shape, everything's matching the lead singer. But this feels very much like two duo, two lead lines singing together. So it's quite nice that they're both sticking to how they would normally sing it if they were on their own. <laughs> literally felt that there was like a squeeze ah, like from the distortion there ah, a flat four um not singing on the diphthong as well there on that word die where we'd go i if we were to die sing on there it gets closed right so if we just keep it da we allow the tongue just to drop and be flat and he is then able to kind of play a bit with the distortion as well and kind of hone into that craft and technique <laughs> No. No, no, no. You know oh, I love that he's kind of really modifying it's like changing the is really allowing the voice to be an instrument especially in this little phrase here we get a lovely call on the no is that still on an f yeah no so still setting that up blending things together so it's not too heavy up on this like beginning part of the first passage then he allows his voice to flip we get a lovely break falsetto moment 
no he ain't no he ain't like right on, <laughs> on that little uh which is really lovely and that he where he breaks in the falsetto is actually lower than those nose so it's very much purposely put in there it's not like a little break or anything it's it's quite very vulnerable I love that closed position at the end. Let's just, I love how raw the guitar sounds as well with his vocals. Obviously this is live, which is great. And I love the stillness of them all sitting, but it's just something so even more haunting, like hearing those rattles and like, it's just so raw. He's actually maintaining on the uh vowel there, allowing that distortion crackle to kind of come in. That's different. Oh, I love this twang in his voice. He's got like, even that, so reaching, like going to an F3 there. He's maintaining quite a bright feel in this. Yes, he's getting a lot of this like, uh, kind of closed vowel shape in there as well. But the reason why it's so bright is because he's actually bringing quite a lot of twang down there. Like, like, which is the tightening of our AES. You know, he could have easily just, but that's not him. <laughs> Actually, another point, he's singing on the dips on there. Die, kind of closes, which helps with that, eh, keeping it brighter, because as a lot more of a darker, the tongue might want to be a bit lower. Interesting. You know he ain't gonna die. But then opens up. I love that line. Nice play. Mm. Okay, back on that F. So it seems like he's going from one point of his, of his voice through his first passage without kind of flipping or anything. You know, he's mastered this area of his voice really lovely. But again, mm. on this please, where we would E it, right? Please, in order to get a little bit more of a thickness connection, he's opened up to E, please. Getting a bit more of an ear vowel in there. And he's really kind of leaning forward into that word, sending that forward, sending that direction and energy flow forward it's just it's really lovely and that's what's really helping him drive that distortion in there as well oh God, please, please. and he's keeping that clarity all the way down
قال Nice. So actually there, we didn't have that flip that we had before, so it's different, but the, I love these runs down and he's keeping it on that down. Oh, no. you know da, like keeping it on this da, on this ah vowel as he descends. And there's such like a lean and moan into this passageway as well. No, he, eh. they kind of like and I, I love that the, uh, we only hear the duo voices, we heard it in the entrance and the ooh, and then the kind of hook part of the song, which is lovely. And then I had a feeling I was going to go back to ooze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's still that unclarity and his unclear, like, connection in his voice, even up on the, like, even when he's being up in his head voice, where his vocal folds are a lot thinner. Um, and yeah, so it was nice that we returned back to the ooze. Ooze are really lovely when we blend, like, we can be very quiet with them. We can be a bit more open to our head voice. Um, and it's, I mean, it's very haunting. That was beautiful. Right, I think it's time to go on to uh, Man in the Box. Let's go <laughs> before we get to it this is live at more theater 1990 it says so uh yeah i'm excited to hear it's quite nice hearing that and then let's see what happens here because like i said I, I don't know very much about this let's go <laughs> oh that hurt though Gosh, was this the year of headbanging or what? Um, my neck hurts. <laughs> I love how musically, obviously a very different intro to what we just heard with Rooster, but vocally, before we were on ooze, now we're on the like, ah, 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 kind of like open uh, sounds, but he's very much kind of, it's like he's hearing the music behind him and, you know, uh, enhancing that by adding his own instrument to it, which is his voice, obviously. And it's kind of keeping this quite uh, twang forward play sound again. Uh, whereas before, we, obviously, we had that uh, falsetto ooh, but here, very much kind of mimicking that guitar sound almost. I love I think we reach a C sharp down there. Save me. Oh, that's so low. Um, but there's such a clarity to his voice. Um, I know I'm going to keep comparing it to what I've just heard as well. I'll try and keep this separate, but it's just, it's really nice hearing 
the two back to back um, because we can obviously hear similarities. I love the punchiness of his entrance lines as well. In my beep. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> but we get, again, not singing on the diphthong. And so E flat, the top part of his chest voice, maintaining this thicker sound. Da -da. And that distortion. So I'm laughing at the fact that he's like, da, and she's like, no, 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 no. It's like the difference in sudden, like just contrasting uh, call and response lines is fab. I have a look at the, I have a look, I had a look, I'm having a look at the lyrics um, so I can see what we're modifying to sing up there. Where are we? Da, ah. B flat. Brr. Okay, so vocal folds are thinning out. We're coming, we're around the second passage. We can still maintain a thicker sound, but if we were to reach up with our thick folds, we would feel heavy. And like when people, you know, feel we get tense and we feel like we're like literally screaming and we're hurting ourselves, we're not gonna want to keep repeating that because it's gonna cause pain and irritation to our vocal folds. So we have to find a way on how to do that without hurting ourselves. We are modifying vowels here, like, crazy um but also he is leaning back and he's like not only not this he's not reaching but his whole body is leaning his mic back as well leaning so his core is engaged we have to be supported on these long notes as well and he's really calling them out so he's lightening up his top part of his chest voice which is beautiful <laughs> So that is feed me, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> feed. <laughs> What's the point of going feed? <laughs> it's just not. So he's opening up to a feed. On this A vowel, the more open we are as we're belting, the easier it's going to be. So it's good to find modifications. Obviously A is quite far away from E, but he's, you know, he's screaming. I love the A, A, A. And that's Jesus Christ. So J, he's opened up from an A vowel instead of a G. It would sound very <laughs> Jesus Christ superstar. Jesus, where he kind of like E-R, whereas he's going Jesus and he's actually closing on the us. <laughs> I can see why Ian's told me to go for that one and then this one, put them both like, you know, together because the other one was so beautiful and still uh, and really captured the vulnerability and haunting nature of what he was telling us. And here we're getting a completely different performance. I love the mic technique as well. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're singing up here. We're getting a lovely kind of bounce effect, but then he's really right up close as well. And as the, the chorus kind of comes to an end, um, and then he does this, like sinks into it, like, <laughs> which is real cool. Yeah, a full body commitment. And I love how twang, let's go back a little bit more, but this, ah, it's so twangified, like to the max. <laughs> Like, it's a little bit of a shake. That 
was like a like a burp in there essentially um essentially there's lots of like distortion there. it was not fry uh, it wouldn't be there there's just a lot of like a growl in there So up in the F sharp there, he's really starting, he starts this phrase on the highest note of the phrase, right? Da, da, and he descends as he comes down. So he needs to be supported because, you know, the furthest away we are from our chest voice, wherever that may be, like, around, that's where he would naturally speak, right? Hey, he probably doesn't talk up there all the time, but he can still bring a speech-like quality up there. Whoa, like really kind of cool out there. That's how he's going to be anchored and supported. And again, he's kind of like holding onto the mic, leaning back, Da, da, and he brings that down with him. I like the back in there. I love the vibrato that da, it gets straight onto this vibrato. He's still quite close to the mic as he's like screaming these notes out. B flat, sorry. Uh, da, like he's still quite like really close. Look at that tongue position here. Ah, and he's sending his teeth forward, so it's quite a bright sound. He's not, ah, he's kind of keeping this, he's able to still create this thick sound that he wants while still having quite a wide uh, shape, which is great. What I love about this the most is that he's rocking back, bringing everything with him. So it is aiding him in the sound that he wants to create rather than reaching up and having to change everything. Everything here is keeping lovely and relaxed. And then he leans into it. Love that screen. Yeah! Goodness, the hairography on this. Let's just go back a bit. I love these kind of ad lib calls that we're getting as well because that's how we kind of experiment with these sounds right ah just like kind of scream out ah like whatever um so it's lovely that we kind of hearing this throughout <laughs> He stayed up there a lot longer that time. Ah, so much anchor and support needs to be up there. There's, it's kind of like he's allowing a little bit of breath coming in there now. Uh, it's a little bit like wispy. In order to belt, we need to make sure we're resisted in our vocal folds. If there's too much breath coming through, it's just gonna feel unstable. So that breath is kind of like an added effect that he's adding after, but it still means that the vocal folds kind of aren't touching all the way because otherwise how would that breath come out? But ah, it's, it's like just a little bit of that huskiness in there. And he's staying on there for a longer time as well. You're not coming down. And he's still able to get the vibrato.
Um, yeah, no, I'm absolutely loving this. Uh, I can't get my hair out. <laughs> this, um, I feel very smart today. I don't know who dressed me in a blazer today. I should have been like, ah. <laughs> I dressed myself. I'm a, a big gal. <laughs> old Yamaha drums. <laughs> no, come back. Wait, I'm not done with you. <laughs> well, we had a similar structure to what we had with Rooster as well in the fact that it was a full circle. We returned back to those vocalizations at the end. You know, before we had the ooze, now we're going back to the ah, ah, ah which is very twangified lead. Twangified. Twang heavy. <laughs> twangified. Really, really, really cool. Um, oh, thank you, Ian. <laughs> Well, that was a great first dive into Alice in Chains for me. I've heard little snippets that Ian have has shown me, but not these two songs that he's put together. Um, well, he hadn't put them together, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but I very much enjoyed it. It's such, I love when we hear different unique styles. Uh, you know, I got to admit when I first heard Lane's voice, I was a bit like, whoa, this is different. And I didn't know how, like, but you know, it wasn't anything that I'd heard really before. And I think that's what makes it really interesting because why do something that we've, heard before um which i kind of sometimes struggle in my own singing um i don't know where i fit where do i belong anyway that's for another time <laughs> but thank you very much for watching this reaction and analysis video i hope you did enjoy it if you did please go ahead and click that subscribe button the bell button and the thumbs up button do leave a comment in the comment section below it all helps and i shall see you very soon for another video bye